the Cardinal King here, inviting you once again into the King's Court. And today we're going to teach you the secrets of becoming an AI art millionaire using Adobe Stock. So join us on this journey. All right, guys. So a couple of days ago, Adobe Stock announced that they were allowing AI generated art into their stock photography platform. I'm a big believer that in the next five years, AI generated art is going to replace stock photography completely. So I wanted to make a little video series for you guys where once a month, once every other month, I upload stuff into Adobe Stock and I get to show you guys how much money it's made and be really transparent about that. And it'll be like a fun little game and journey for us to enjoy, right? So this is the announcement for it, and I'm going to have all those links in the description. And here is the guidelines for submitting things. And I'm also going to put them in the subscription so you can read that yourself, but we're going to read these out. So the first thing we have to do is ensure that we have the appropriate rights to submit. So read the terms and conditions for generative AI tools that you use to ensure that you have the rights to license all generative AI content that you submit to Adobe Stock under the contributor terms. For example, you cannot submit any content if you are not permitted to license it for commercial purposes. So if you make a generation of Mickey Mouse, that's a no-go. Like the mouse is going to go after you, right? Don't use generative AI tools that are known or recognized as having serious flaws in their design or output. For example, tools which generate identifiable people or properties from generic prompts. Don't submit work depicting real places, identifiable property, e.g. famous characters or logos, or notable people whether photorealistic or even caricatures. So no celebrities, no uh, Michael B. Jordan uh, in your prompt, no Arnold Schwarzenegger in your prompt. Um, I guess try not to put a real... I, I'm, I'm guessing if a place is public domain, like if it's Ayers Rock, you can still put it. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot just to see what happens, right? But um, yeah, don't put those in there. Try to keep it like fantasy-based. So here's the proper way to label and tag your content as generative AI illustrations. So submit all generated images as illustrations. Include the main subject of your prompt in the title. Title and tag your content with the keywords generative AI as well as generative and AI to expedite moderation and help customers find the right content. Tag generated images with inaccurate or vague descriptions. Don't tag, tag those images with those inaccurate or vague descriptions such as 3D render, wallpaper, or neural network. Unless accurate to the content subject or style. Don't describe AI generated content as depicting real people or places. Don't keep repetitive technical patterns such as platform specific features, weights or settings from your prompt in your title assets. So they don't want to see the brackets or the um, parentheses. Easy enough, right? Just kind of tell them what, what your prompt was for the generation. So prioritize creativity and maintain high quality which I'm guessing they, they want things that are a little bit more realistic and a little more artistic than the run of the mill thing, right? So do check your submissions carefully to make sure the anatomy of your content is intended and relevant. I'm guessing they don't want uh, 12 fingers on each each one of their uh, the, the hands. Do generative AI tools. Do use generative AI tools to create work that fills content needs within the collection. Do select only images which provide unique value to the collection. Don't use an image that you don't have the rights to as parameters for your generative AI prompts. Don't describe or depict subjects or locations in a way that may mislead buyers. Don't submit multiple versions from the same prompt or similar iterations of a prompt. I have no clue how they're going to check this, by the way, but whatever. I guess that's more so you don't spam one thing with slight variations. So this is the interesting part right here is the model and property release requirements for generative AI content depicting people. So basically what this is saying is if like on this one on the side, which is a, a probably like a custom model based on this guy, you need a model release. And this one that isn't, you will need a property release. Um, and I'm going to test this out, by the way. I'm going to submit some of the ones that I did of myself um, in the first, second video where I show you guys how to do AI style. I'll put the icon up above so you can see that video if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, it says up, do upload property releases for illustrations depicting generated people. Don't submit works based on real people unless you have a valid model release for that person, which I will be doing for myself since I can make a model release at any time, right? 
Those submit were created with prompts referring to people, places, property, unless you have the legal right to do so. If you have a model release or property release, for example, don't include the other artists' names, notable people, or famous characters slash brands in your prompts. Generative AI content cannot be submitted to the illustrative editorial collection, obviously, because it's not editorial, right? Which is for editorial use only. IEC submissions must be accurately portrayals of brands in an authentic, accurate, or unmodified matter as they are found in the real physical world. Submissions will be rejected or found to be in violation of this policy. So simple enough stuff, guys. Um, this is basically just what you need to know before you submit. And now I'm going to move on into what I think was the hardest part of the project, which was the research on what type of stock photography sells, how to best sell it. So... Here are the things that I found in that research. Um, you kind of want to flood the market because you never know which image is going to sell the best. Um, niches make you riches. So you want to find a niche for yourself that is useful, that is kind of cool, but isn't quite out there yet. So you don't necessarily always want to follow the trend. You want to follow the trend and give it something else, right? Um, keywords and tags are very important. So I'm and you always try to pick between 20 and 30. I'm gonna show you this tool that's called the Microstock Keyword Tool. So right now, if we go here onto this website, and I'll have the, the link in the description again, um, we're gonna do the search term barista and we're gonna load 25 images. So this will show me 25 images of baristas from Shutterstock. And if we click on one, let's submit. It's gonna show us all the keywords for that specific image. We can click on more than one, right? So we can go back and then just do bam, 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 bam. And it'll show us all the key steps, that the, the keywords that they have in common. And when we press on here, it'll copy and paste them over here. And you can add your own to that list. So this is a really powerful tool for what we're about to do. Okay, so we'll go back to the research here. Um, you want to have classical styling to make your images timeless. So, you know, if you're doing like, um, I don't know, if you're doing like a coffee shop, you want to make sure it's it looks kind of both classic and modern, but not too modern, right? So it could be any time from the 2000s to the 1960s. So I, I looked into the trends of what was trending today on, on these uh, stock photography sites, and I kind of went down by site. Um, Shutterstock is a lot of beauty and skincare products, a lot of paintings, winter last landscapes. We're right now in December as of the recording of this video. So that seasonal stuff is obviously going to sell really well right now. Uh, first snow, there's lots of food photography and baking. Alamy is a little different. Like they had a lot of grittier images. Like Alamy is very different than what I remember it when I was using it, right? Um, a lot of retro images, so a lot of Polaroids, a lot of stuff with um, like film um, filters on them. I, I doubt that they were authentic film photography, but a, a lot of film-like photography. Um, a lot of lay flats of beauty products, cooking, et cetera, et cetera. iStock had a lot of fire photos, a lot of photos of money, a lot of photos of Hanukkah, a lot of photos of doctors, a lot of photos of nurses holiday backgrounds, nature photos, medical photos, animal illustrations. So here's what we're gonna be generating for this project, not necessarily today, just cause I, I wanna experiment with a couple of other things first. So we did photos of cute animals, right? So you kinda wanna get close up and at their level, uh, little puppers and cats. Uh, we did businesses, which we did a coffee shop scene. Um, we did kind of a corporate art style um, I do want to do some portraits, but I'm going to do a video on um, Stable Diffusion 2.1, and that's when I want to generate those portraits. So I'm going to do that video, generate the portraits for the next month, and then you guys will get to see both of those efforts coming out in the following month. Um, we have photos of technology. I did do a couple of portraits, though. And you'll, you'll see them right now. Portraits of technology or photos of technology, seasonal things, which we might do some Christmas ones a little bit later. Things that aren't easily available, so remote locations, festivals, cityscapes, and landmarks. Large groups of people. Lifestyle, which uh, I think skincare and beauty is the biggest one right now. 
foods, which I did a, a lot of. I, I hit on this one pretty well. So ethnic, organic, and healthy. And then we just try to anticipate trends, right? So the most profitable segments are people, things, places. So easy enough to remember, right guys? All right guys, so here are the things I generated. We did baristas, businessmen, dogs, expressions, so which is portraits, right? We did food and we did landscapes. So the baristas, we did kind of a more modern one. I, I don't think this one's up to snuff. I, I gotta play around with these a little bit more. Uh, this one's pretty cool. I just gotta fix up the hands here. Uh, maybe fix this up because her hand turns skin colored over here and then has a shirt. Oh, and all of these are going to get touched up in Photoshop before I put them in, right? But I, I did roll with something that's a little bit more like 1950s-esque. Oh, I like this one except for the hands here, which is missing an arm. But Got that same kind of problem. Ugly hands. This one has no hands, so she has got a beautiful smile. Uh, this one's fine, so long as we fix the hand here and then just kind of get rid of this. These these are kind of cool looking. Uh, not not my favorite out of the whole set, but um, good enough. So we did a set of businessmen, kind of 1960s style. Um, this one's very cool looking. The, the eyes are off, though. So that needs some fixing. This one's a lot better. Like the hands look good. The face looks good. Um, we might grab some parts of this to, to composite into these two. Um, this one's very cool looking. Just needs, you know, hands fix again. Then with this one needs the expression fix, the hands. But um, we can composite these two. I actually love how this looks, just not the face. So I might composite this face into this body. Make it happen from there, right? Um, this is another very cool one. And I'm trying to generate these as 16 by nines so that, you know, they, they work a little bit more like a standard photo does and you have, you know, you can put a headline over here or something, right? Um, this one's also very good. Needs a couple fixes, like the face isn't that great, but again, we can always go in and refine, right? And then this one of these two businessmen brothers looks really cool. The tree looks a little spotty here, but that can always be fixed. All right. And the, the ones I think are going to be the most successful are these dog ones. So we did a couple of breeds. We did Dalmatians. Look how cute these little guys are. Look at that. Look at that. That's so cute. And I think for this one, I'm going to split it off into this will be one image and then the second one will be a second image. And again, we have that same prompt. We can grab bits and pieces from each one. Um, this one's cool. I'm probably going to crop out these two dogs and replace them. Um, this one's beautiful. Look at that. A uh, little doggo. So cute. So yeah, the, the ones I have the most hope for are the, the little dogs, right? So got a Shiba Inu, got more little Shiba Inus. Then we have a little bit more realistic take here. It, it All of these took a lot of generations. Like you're just seeing the cherry picked results of the generations, right? Super cute. Um, I did a little St. Bernard action here. Oh, look at how cute this guy is. So small. And there's like a big one too. I love this. Like that's a good composition. Um, we did some terriers. Love little terriers, man. My cousin used to have one that was like a, he's a part of the family, you know? I used to love that little dog. Rest in peace. Um... But, oh, look how cute this one is. Yeah, again, these are all getting like a little bit of a touch up in Photoshop, then I'll, I'll toss them in. So next up, we have a couple of portraits with expressions. Um, this lady is happy. Same lady is happy. 
yeah. iteration on the first one, I believe. And then the same lady is kind of like sad and sullen, just needs a little bit of help on the hands, but looks pretty good otherwise. Uh, same with this one, same lady, sad and sullen. So this one is the original, and then this one's an iteration. Okay, so the other one that I think has a lot of hope other than the dogs is the food. So I did uh, I did all the food in the same kind of style of like still lifes. So here we have some dumplings. Oh man, this is making me so hungry. We have some lasagna. And these are kind of like Renaissance still lifes, right? And that, that kind of style, just something I haven't seen done is, you know, oh, well, it's a still life using more modern food. Oh, this looks so good. It has ravioli, pasta. That adds quite a bit to that uh, Adobe stock collection. Uh, these are steak, so. Look at the marbling on that. It's beautiful. Oof. So delicious. Um, this has got like a good sear and then it's like completely raw on the inside. Look at that. I actually really like this one where it's like the cow, it's cut in half and it's a steak. Uh, this one's interesting for like ad use. And here's like a cook steak. A cook steak with a little bit of wine on the side. Uh, I don't know why there's a spoon on there. A little piece of garlic up here. Oof. That looks delicious. Look at that. It's got its little butter on the side. Oof. And there are barbecue ribs as well, which um, I guess you could consider that ethnic food in the sense that it's very American. Um, it's also food I love, right? So I did more barbecue ribs, although this one looks like salmon, but um, it's still all good. Look at that. Oof. So. Off, guys. And we did sushi, right? Another one of my favorite foods. So I don't think anyone's done the uh, medieval still life of sushi yet. Got salmon. It's making me real hungry, guys. Got the tuna rolls over here. Oof. Is that an uni? Might be. But yeah, it's delicious looking and hopefully it's something new that I don't think, like I said, I don't think anyone's done. So that'll give it a little bit of a competitive advantage. Okay. Next one. We're doing tacos, right? I love the way the tortilla renders on this, by the way. Like, that looks amazing. Got uh, tacos with beans and rice inside. That's more of a burrito. Yeah. Uh, this is like one of those fusion tacos. Like, like this is like al pastor, and then this is the pineapple, and then like a little bit of red for chili pepper in there with some cilantro on the side. Delicious. Um, this kind of like a mulita. Same thing, al pastor with pineapple on it. But yeah, this, oof. Gotta, I gotta whip out that, uh, that pork soon so I can eat, you know? And then other than that, I did a couple of landscapes here. Um, Kind of like inspired by Ansel Adams. Uh, they don't look that great though. There's like a little bit of like almost like a repeating pattern, which I don't like. And maybe I can soften that up a little bit in Photoshop, but as is, um, I'm not a huge fan of that. Like you see, it even has it here. Has it here on the trees. Um, but I'm going to try to soften it up just to see if that helps it, but I don't think it will. We had a couple of uh, paintings of Ayers Rock in Australia. Um, like I said, I don't know if now reading the content guidelines, I don't know if that's going to fly. I think if you post it up, since it is like a public place and it's not a protected place or whatever, I think if you just post it up without saying it's Ayers Rock, you should be fine. Here's some sand dunes, right? And this one's literally just desert sand dunes. So this one should be good to post up. 
This one is the Grand Canyon. Um, again, it has that repeating pattern thing and it doesn't pass my quality standards there. Same thing with this guy, unfortunately. Oh man, this is beautiful. This this one, the actual the repeating pattern actually does make it look because it does look like an actual textured brush. And uh, here's Mount Everest. Yeah, I think these are great. Look at that. Even has like a little bit of a Sherpa action going down here on the bottom. Uh, we did some of the Eiffel Tower, which I guess probably not going to fly because it's a place and that one does have like copyright protections and stuff. I believe it, it has them due to the lights and it has more to do with photographs. But since it does say not to put specific places, we're not going to submit these. But I do want to show them to you because we already made them, right? Um, I believe this guy is Yellowstone National Park. But yeah, again, it kind of has that uh, stifling up here. Isn't my favorite. Yosemite. And that's what we're going to be submitting this month, guys. Next month, we'll have the update on what happened, if we made any money. We're going to make a couple more images to go there, and I'll show you those in the next video. And this has been the Cardinal King out. I hope you learned something cool, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all the goofy things that YouTubers tell you to do. I'm out.